So today I'm gonna tell you why I think vegan YouTubers are stupid. This is a world This is a world premiere. This is a world Hey y'all, welcome to another Food for Thought. So before we jump into it, you guys know I can be a little clickbaity, and so no, I'm not really gonna, you know, I don't think vegan YouTubers are necessarily stupid, but I do think some of the tactics and the thinking around how uh, we get people to go vegan is um, a little skewed, maybe, in the vegan community. I mean, it seems like there's this kind of general thinking that uh, exposing people to information about being vegan and exposing them to some of the considerations about the environment, exposing them to the considerations about health, or exposing them to the truth about the exploitation of animals in the animal industry will be enough to get people to go, wow, you know, I never really knew those things. I'm gonna go vegan tomorrow. And I think that that's just not the best idea. But before I jump into that, I'm going to um, just talk about a couple of things that um, have been interesting to me, just kind of in the vegan community uh, all over the last couple of days. Well, first of all, you guys know that my show, Hamlet, closed. Um, it was great. We had, you know, full houses. Well, it, you know, it was a free show. It was done in the park. And um, I ended up not really doing any documenting. I have some photos from the show on my Instagram. I don't know if I've included any in, uh, info on my Instagram here, but I will include some links to my Instagram. Uh, I'll try to put them like, you know, either up here or up in the corner over there somewhere. I think there's a place, uh, if you're on my channel, you, there's a place where you can link to my other social media. So I'll do something like that. But uh, the show went very well. Chances are I'll be working with that company again, you know, knock wood. Um, also, there's another uh, theater company here in Detroit called the Plow Shares Theater. And um, well, it's uh, kind of an amazing theater and uh, haven't they haven't been doing work for a while they had some debt um, and it's a, an all african-american theater that does works from the american the african-american canon so that's things like you know august wilson lorraine hansberry susan laurie parks the list goes on and on but uh, those plays generally don't get done a lot you know they get done you know you know here and there th throughout seasons in theaters that aren't, you know, specifically, um, you know, focused on, you know, upholding the tradition of African-American theaters, but a lot of the plays from the African-American canon are just completely lost because there are, you know, thousands of them and there really just isn't the place for them to be done because they maybe don't appeal to a broad enough audience. But there, yeah, I really do feel like there needs to be a place for those works to be explored and to see how they're holding up over time and over the you know what we say we, we think of the the progression of history specifically in the united states so plowshares theater um the artistic director of that theater is offering classes he's actually kind of put together a um an ensemble of actors to work with and i was invited to be part of the class so i'm really excited about that so shouting out plowshares theater um, i also want to shout out um, you guys know I'm on a couple of board of directors, uh, one for an organization called the Cooperation Group. The Cooperation Group happened to be at Alt Space doing their board retreat, and that was kind of wonderful because for the entire weekend, um, well, you know, the entire weekend, because it was two full days, and, um, you know, since Alt Space is vegan, they got to explore being vegan, and one of the other board members actually did the catering. So I had to go out, learn vegan recipes, to prepare that food, brought that food here. I think the food was being like stored at that person's mother's house, so that mother, that person's mother got exposed to vegan food. So just the idea of like, because of this space and people wanting to use the space because of the environment, um, that's not necessarily all about being vegan, but the fact that the, the space itself is vegan um, uh, kind of puts people in a position where they have to, you know, explore something that they might not have given some thought to. Another organization that I'm on the board of directors of is called Solidarity, and I promise you guys, I am going to be doing. Um, a feature on uh, um, a feature on Solidarity, and I'm forgive me. I'm looking some stuff up on my phone because Solidarity happens to be in the midst of a fundraising. 
campaign. Suddenly my phone is making all kinds of noise. Uh, yeah, so they are in the middle of a fundraising fan campaign. It's called Parker Village Shines. And I'm just gonna read off. We're bringing a state-of-the-art smart solar street light Wi-Fi signage and security to the Highland to uh, Highland Park to build our legacy of innovation and leadership. And what basically Solidarity does is in Highland Park, the street lights were removed. <laughs> so um, so it, at night it's pretty dark. I think they I think um, one only the street lights at intersections were left so that you know cars could see people when they were crossing the street at the intersections, but um, entire blocks are uh, completely dark, which makes for not the most safety. Highland Park, if you don't know, is a city um, in, it, in and of itself that exists right pretty much in the center of, of Detroit to, uh, as you're heading north. Um, in Detroit, along Woodward Avenue, you hit Highland Park. Uh, if you're on, um, uh, you know, most of the ma the freeways that kind of go through Detroit, at one point you'll you'll pass a sign that says "Entering the City of Highland Park." So I'm, like, as I said before, I'm on the board director of uh, directors at uh, Solidarity. They're doing a fundraiser. I wanted to shout them out. If you're interested in offering access to community-controlled solar energy, alternative energy sources, kind of trying to break away from, you know, our dependence on on fossil fuels, you can do a lot by um, making a donation to Solidarity. So I'll leave some information uh, in the description box below. So now, I am um, one of my, um, one of my I'm going to say one of my favorite YouTubers to follow. Just I feel somebody I feel like as a kind of a friend in the vegan YouTube community is Vegan Foot Soldier, which is um, to some people that might seem really unlikely. And it really started. Um, we were I think we were on a Vegan Revolution live stream, and I think we got into a little bit of a a little bit of a debate, uh, which ended up turning into my favorite thing, a dialogue that was kind of happening on his channel, happening on my channel, and it just turned out that um, we both uh, share a lot of the same values, fundamentally share a lot of the same values. And I think that that's true of a lot of folks in the vegan community. I think just a lot of people in the world share fundamentally the same values. And so ended up you know, just kind of following each other's channels. And forgive me, there's some noise. My next door neighbor is doing some work on his house. So, um, Vegan Foot Soldier is somebody that I follow regularly. So, um, you know, I you know get notifications when his v uh, videos come up. And he was, um, he was recently, he recently made a video um, criticizing Plant Eats for a review Plant Eats did of a Vegan Gains and Athene Wins debate. I did not see the Vegan Gains and Athene Wins debate, um, but um, it was one of those cases where, you know, even though I adore you, vegan foot soldier, I didn't necessarily agree with your criticisms of Plant Eats. Plant Eats really was pointing out some very, um, some very good points about the way that Athene wins is really able to logically construct his arguments and that vegan gains, as we, you know, have seen demonstrated, although, you know, the word on the street is that vegan gains is working on his ability to be less emotional and be less triggered during his debates. Um, Athene wins is yeah, well, and here's what happened. I ended up instead of watching the vegan gains and Athene wins um, debate because you know I don't like to hang out on vegan gains channel that much. Guess why? But I did uh, want to see the debate if I could. I didn't find it on Athene wins channel, but I did find another video that had been referred to in some of the discussion on Plant Eats channel, I believe. So um, for those of you who don't follow this, I'm really sorry. The idea is Vegan Gains is a vegan YouTuber who has, I think, somewhere in the area of 200,000 subscribers. He's a pretty, you know, major figure in the vegan YouTube community. Um, I have found him highly problematic, made a video expressing the, the reasons that I thought he was highly pro problematic. Uh, he responded to that video in a way that, you know, some people think he, you know, wrecked me or whatever. He was very insulting, called me retarded, all these things. So that's history. However, he has since then begun to have 
what are being called debates with various larger vegan YouTubers and in one of those debates he you know com just completely was was um, very hostile and very antagonistic towards the person he was uh, in the debate with in other uh, in other debates he's gotten um, triggered and become upset and you know blown up and so that's what I'm talking about here but you don't have to follow this at all the person that I'm focusing on right now is Athene Wins. I went and I watched about an hour and six minute video that Athene Wins made on just the idea of logical consistency. And it was a beautiful argument that was kind of spread out over this. Um, he really, you know, carefully constructs uh, this logic around the, the 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 difference between having you know a lot logical consistency and moral consistency and moral consistency as he you know you know defines it or discusses it can be very complicated because you know what is morality whereas logic is something that can be um, you know it can be because there's kind of a math to logic right if a equals B and B is bad, then A is bad, right? So, you know, and, and, and people may not agree with that, but uh, at least there's um, the, the, the probability of things being accurate are heightened when we focus not on what is based on perceptions and uh, people's feelings, which is where a lot of morals come from, right? The way we feel about things uh, and the way we judge things, whereas logic tends to be based on, you know, having a consistent um, approach, uh, a consistent view, weighing things carefully, um, trying to balance things out. And I don't want to try to dumb down what Athene Wins spends an hour and six minutes building on his channel, but I will include a link to that video in the, uh, in the description box below. And I hope that some of you will watch it and then, you know, maybe on Sunday when I'll be back on Sunday with another live stream on you now. So for those of you who have been missing that, I've been missing it and I've been missing having the opportunity to speak with you guys live. So I will be back on Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And well, hopefully we'll be able to discuss a little bit of Athene Wins. Who knows, maybe Athene Wins will see this video or someone of you will invite Athene Wins to come and guest on that. I don't know. We'll see. Um, also, I believe David Cobb will be in Detroit and possibly we can have David Cobb, you know, actually sit next to me and be on the live stream the whole time. If not, maybe he will guest in, we'll see. But definitely we're gonna get more from David Cobb. For those of you who don't remember, he was the campaign manager for Jill Stein, who was the Green Party candidate in the last US election. So, ha, huh, that was a lot of stuff. So I wanna talk about my, the whole idea of why I think that, um, uh, some of the work that is being done on vegan YouTube could be a little bit futile. And obviously, you know, this is not a question of absolutes. Certainly, sharing information with people, it, you know, knowledge is power, as they say. And so people understanding the impacts of uh, consuming products that were made from sentient beings, um, the impacts of, uh, of that on those sentient beings themselves, which is, you know, I think pretty, has to be pretty obvious, although there are some people who may be lulled into the sense that um, there is a, a humane way to kill. Uh, but they're also, you know, sharing with people informations about uh, about the effects on their health and their effects on their environment on the environment. I think those things are really crucial, but I don't think that it is the most powerful way to share the vegan message, and I don't think it's the most efficient use of our energy. And I think that that ultimately has to be what this boils down to. How efficient can we be with the use of our limited time? Because each of us as an individual only has so much time, only has so many resources, and can only do so much. So how do you get the biggest impact for the work that you do as a vegan activist, an animal advocate? And I think it has less to do with connecting to people 
in a general sense and really figuring out who is going to be the most receptive, who is going to be the most um, susceptible to be impacted by this information. So yes, sharing information, but sharing it with whom? And so I think that, um, and this goes a little bit back to the question of intersectionality. There have been many, many videos that I have made about intersectionality, and I don't want to get into a discussion of it. And I know that probably some of you are, you know, hear that word and want to go, oh my goodness. But here's the thing. One of the greatest barriers to people becoming vegan, in my opinion, is that there is a resistance to change. And that resistance to change doesn't just have to do with changing the way they eat. It has to do with changing any behavior whatsoever. People are resistant to change. Be that out of fear, be it out of stubbornness, be it out of ignorance, be it out of whatever, for whatever reason one can imagine. But this has been shown to be true. There are many papers that have been written, and I'll include some links to some resources for those who are interested in the theory of change. But understanding that change is the barrier to people becoming vegan, or even people being interested in pursuing the information that might lead them to make the decision, the logical decision to go vegan, um, requires us to, um, to connect to individuals who are most likely to at least <laughs> be movable. To at least be movable. And this is why I think understanding veganism as a social justice issue becomes so important. Because individuals who are interested in social justice fundamentally believe in change. People who are interested in social justice fundamentally believe in change. Now, I think it's interesting because at the same time people are afraid of change, I think that people want it. They just don't want to make the change. <laughs> they just don't want to have to do anything and they don't want to be impacted negatively by the change. But there are things that are happening in individuals' lives that they know they want to be different. They just don't want to have to do anything. They don't want to have to make any personal changes or any personal sacrifices to get there. But within the social justice community, you see people who are making these personal sacrifices every day. I mean, we see it in the YouTube community. We see it in the vegan community. You see people who are already willing to make changes to some extent in their lives for something that they find important. In the social justice community, you have people who are doing work in all areas. Not every individual doing work in all areas, but you will find people in many different areas working for social transformation or working towards transformation and what they consider positive transformation. And so by starting with an individual who already has begun the process in themselves of transforming the world that they live in, to introduce to that person another step that they might take in speeding that transformation and supporting that transformation, just to me seems to make the most sense. Because if you look at the individual who is trying to, you know, start a movement or someone who's an activist who's engaged in movement work, if they have uh, an interest in protecting the planet, for example, that person is willing, already willing to go out and organize people and, you know, go to the People's Climate March and go to the March for Science, right? Th that person is already activated or woke, as they say, right? So that person is already engaged in the process of change. And so to that per for that person to have that information about their health, right? To understand how, you know, they, that's, this, is what they, this is their tool for transformation is their, is their bodies and their health becomes not only important for themselves and for their, you know, ego, but their 
effectiveness as an activist is going to be impacted by their health. So introducing that person to veganism and having that discussion about the importance of maintaining their health and how the you know food industry is basically set up, you know, if you watch What the Health and you believe what is in that film, right? Uh, it's, it's destroying us, it's set up to make us sick. So that we can become part of the, you know, the 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 healthcare industry, right? We can become, you know, uh, we can have our wealth extracted by the healthcare industry, right? So it makes logical sense to talk to that person about the impacts of the, you know, animal products on their health, and how, and you know, to talk to them about how um, much be better a change maker <laughs> they can be by making this other change, right? And bringing other people into that change. You know, also when we talk about the, you know, as I said, the impact of the environment, this person understanding the impact of the animal agriculture industry on the environment, having that empowered with that information is going to go and talk to other people about it, especially if they're an environmentalist, right? Um, so also, you know, talking about the effects on animals, you have people who are doing work um, around the various types of discrimination that have led to exploitation of certain groups, right? Or, you know, really all of us to some extent, but in different ways. But people who are doing work in those areas by talking to them, and it happens all the time, right? You find vegans saying things like, you know, carelessly bringing up things like the Holocaust carelessly bringing up things like slavery but if that if those individuals could be you know a little bit more savvy and not have those discussions with someone you know the general public but have those discussions with people who are doing work in those areas and talk to them about how they might be able to transfer transfer their beliefs about the exploitation of one group to the exploitation of animals um, you might get pretty far. And I've found that to be true. I have found now, um, and had it you know, told to me, that many of the activists that I work with, and you know, understand that I'm not coming into those spaces and saying, hey, everybody, go vegan. I'm coming to those spaces and I'm, uh, and I'm modeling veganism. And every now and then, when we're talking about, you know, the groups that are being exploit exploited in the world, I might say, and animals, right? And those, uh, and those touches and adding those and making those contributions to a discussion that's already in process can be incredibly, incredibly powerful and incredibly, incredibly effective. So whether you believe in intersectionality or not, um, it's, it's only logical that in individuals who are interested in transformation are going to be the most, the most open to the idea of the changes that will be necessary to be made in their own lives to become vegan. So, I don't know. Um, you know, as I said before, I want to apologize for being a little bit clickbaity. And if you don't feel like this video really kind of lived up to the title, then I apologize deeply. You know, punish me. You know, give this video a dislike or what have you. But um, that said, I think I'm going to leave it there. So that's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself. The world is a ghetto. It does again.